did he that went out? I'm laying and sitting there in the pocket nice and comfortable, and I just let the horse kind of tell me where he wanted to be after that. And uh, when they started coming uh, around him here the first time by the wire, he grabbed a bit, and so I just let him stay comfortable. By the time we hit the quarter pole, I'm asking him and run up in there, and the four horse, he dropped down in front of me, and I stepped back out, and, and he gathered himself back up and, and just gave me everything he had. You wanted to come up here and win the big race you did. How's it feel? It feels fantastic. We came up here with really no expectations, just to do the best job that we could. I knew that my horses were fit, they're sound. We conditioned them over the track all week and they were training well, so I really had a good feeling about the race, but you never really know how they're going to handle the bull ring. And I'd say it was outstanding. Time now for Sport of Kings trivia, and here is today's trivia question. Four horses have won 16 consecutive races. Three of them are Citation, Mr. Frisky, and Hallowed Dreams. Do you know the fourth? Well, I'll the answer for you in just a moment. Don't go away. The Sport of Kings will be right back. Time now for the answer to today's trivia question. Cigar won 16 in a row but could not get to 17, losing to Dare and Go in the Pacific Classic. Cigar, though, came right back and took the Woodward Classic, making it 17 out of 18 races. Now, here's the part of the show we simply call In Case You Miss It. It's a chance for you to look back at the magic and the mystery of horse racing here in British Columbia from the Sport of Kings perspective. In Case You Missed It. A few years back, we sat down and did an interview with legendary jockey Johnny Longden. Longden, back in 1943, rode Count Fleet to become only the 11th rider to win the Triple Crown. In that interview, or in the interview you're about to watch, Longden talks candidly and openly about his journey through those Triple Crown races. In case you miss it, here's that extraordinary interview. John, you've done some things that no other rider or trainer has done. You won the Triple Crown in 1943 on Count Tell us a, a little about that in your words so our audience can hear it firsthand. Well, uh, you know, Count Fleet was, uh, uh, well, he won the Triple Crown. And in those days, uh, they ran the Derby on the Saturday. The following Saturday, they run the Preakness. The following Saturday, they run the Belmont. And he won all three of them. And he won the Belmont by 27 lengths. And uh, he was a great horse. He was a little roguish, but he was a, a runner. He loved to run. If you, if you just leave him alone, that's that's all. He loved to run. I went along for the ride. He was just a great horse. You took the Triple Crown with him. Then you take the take it in chronology, take it in its exact order, basically. I will. 1966. You decide to pack it in, and you did it in a very unique style. That's on George Royal, who was bred in Vancouver. Tell us about how you did that and why it was an exceptional day in racing history. Well, uh, I was going to a sports dinner at Pasadena on the Thursday night, and on the way I decided I'd, I was going to quit. So at the dinner, I announced that I win, lose, or draw, I rode George Royal, and that would be my last ride. And uh, I guess I put 40, 50 years of experience in because George Royal came from last and won by, a, by the smallest of margin, by a nose. And uh, I think it was a great race. There were about 80,000 people there that day. And before they hung the number up, you could hear a pin drop. And then when they hung the number up, well, it was just quite a throw up. Now, you're the only trainer to do this, John, and that is ride a Kentucky Derby winner, saddle one, Majestic Prince, Bill Hartack in the irons. Tell us about that memorable day. Another one of the great moments of racing because of Johnny Longdon. Well, you know, as he won the, the Derby, and he won it quite handy, he won the Preakness quite handy, and uh, I, want, I really didn't want to run him in the Belmont because he wasn't 100%. But uh, anyhow, he ran in arts and letters, beating me, finished second. I really think if Bill had let him run out of there and then took a hold of him, I really believe he would have won it. And then that would have been a record to break. 
You must love coming back and visit jocks rooms. I do. I love to be with the jocks, and all I can do is wish them all. I'd like to see them all be winners, which they're, they're going to win. But we all can't win uh, and be as lucky as I've been, but I wish them all the luck in the world, every one of them. John, your picture hangs up on my wall in my house, and it's like a rogues gallery of stars that I met. Racing's been good to a lot of us. As you say, it's been great to you. I'm honored, and along with the jocks at Exhibition Park and the racing fans to having you here, because to me, I'm privileged to be doing the interview. Thank you, John. I do wish you all the luck. Well, it's been a great life, and uh, uh, you know, I I, uh, I believe in luck. If, you, if you're lucky, you're gonna get there, and I've had a lot of luck. 60 years after that accomplishment, Longman passed away at the age of 96 on his birthday, February 14th, 2003. With hockey season now underway, we thought this would be the proper time to show on our salute to the champions, a horse named after a popular NHL hockey player. The hockey player's name first is Essa Tikkanen, who played for seven NHL clubs, including the Vancouver Canucks. The horse is Tikkanen. This is the 1994 Breeders' Cup turf. In this race, Tikkanen is 14th. I said 14th in a 14 horse field. What a finish. Enjoy our little NHL hook. The Salute to the Champions is brought to you by the Province Sports, where you can read Tommy Walski's column, Hoss Talk, every Friday. The Province Sports, it all starts here. And they are off. And Vaudeville comes out quickly. And Bolas is out there to flash her speed and establish the early lead, or rather make that Dahlia's dreamer. Bolas moving on the outside now to be second. Vaudeville is in between horses, running third in the early going. Celtic Arms had to check, and check hard indeed did Celtic Arms. And then it's Paradise Creek, who's up close to the pace on the outside now, edging into fourth position in between horses. It's a rain trap now running in fifth. Then toward the inside, Bolashin is sixth in the early going. Fraze is now running in seventh. He's about seven lengths from the early front runners. Only Ryle is in between horses, running in eighth position. Celtic Arms has a ground-saving trip so far. And then it's White Muzzle who's drafting in behind horses in the early going. Near the back of the pack, our intrepidity, Hernando, is now running 12th of 14. Hot Toop is 13th. And Tikkanen has the last spot as they move by us for the first time. Solid fractions here, 23 and 3 and 46 and 4 for the half mile. Dahlia's Dreamer is the pacemaker. And a Paradise Creek is moving early now. He's edging toward the lead on the outside. Bolas is right there in between horses. And Vaudeville has had a perfect trip so far, saving ground all the way as they make their way into the back stretch. Bolo Sheen drafting in behind horses, running in fifth. Celtic Arms is sixth toward the inside, then only Royale. White Muzzle is now being helped along about seven lengths from the lead. Then it's Hernando, who is yet to put in his best run as they continue their run up the back stretch. And Paradise Creek has taken the lead with less than a half mile to run. It is Paradise Creek now the leader. Vaudeville right there to challenge him with a half mile to go. Dahlia's Dreamer couldn't keep up the pace and now fades to third. Celtic Arms now toward the inside, running in fourth position. White Muzzle is in between horses. Hernando had to check as the field move into the far turn. Hernando has lost all chance. He checked hard in behind Dahlia's Dreamer. They're rounding the far turn. Pat Day, Paradise Creek, a slim lead. Vaudeville, a stiff challenge for the would-be champion as the field turns for home. Tikkanen, who was last as they pass this for the first time, is now a hard-charging third as they come to mid-stretch. Only Royale is right there running in fourth. Paradise Creek still holding on to a short lead. One more bold challenge from Tikkanen, who surges past Paradise Creek as they come down to the line. Hatouf is coming late, 50 yards from the line. Tikkanen in front. Hatouf, Paradise Creek third today. It is Tikkanen who scores in the mile-and-a-half turf. Okay, that's it for this edition of the Sport of Kings. And once again, on behalf of everyone here, we would like to say thank you for all your support and also our sponsors throughout the 2009 Dolbert Racing season. Remember to keep them straight, or you know what? We may get you on that final point.